messages to banks that have liquidity. So to some degree, Citibank and HSBC, uh, really the top two, JPM, those are the top three liquidity banks. And when you're sending SWIFT messages, you're sending messages to banks to release liquidity and making sure the debits and credits match. So to some degree, really boil it down, Ripple's competing with the liquidity of City and the messaging of SWIFT, but in one, because we're both messaging and liquidity. Okay, Welcome to the crypto teacher. teacher. And you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Support is great content by hitting the cash app and by joining the Patreon. And guys, we have Ripple's XRP, Brad Garlinghouse, speaking of liquidity and messaging. And we had JP Morgan early on in the month talking about tokenizing deposits. Now we have Citigroup. And guys, we know what it's for. That's the right Fed now. They're ready to speed up those payments and start to integrate the rest of these platforms. Remember, guys, DeFi is definitely the new banking. And Fed now is definitely interoperable. Now we have Janet Yellen not being straight with the people. Saying right now the auto workers strike doesn't have an effect on the economy. And guys, we know that's not correct. You're already going to be getting thousands of people laid off who are connected to the actual auto workers. And we know if they're not making cars, that means that whoever making parts are have to shut down, so therefore they have to lay off people. And then on top of it, the small businesses around are going to be hurt because thousands of these auto workers are no longer going to be spending money, whether it's lunch, whether it's shopping. But guys, we know this is all part of the plan in order to bring in the robots, algorithms, and drones. Remember, all these people have to be laid off in order for the fourth industrial revolution to work. Remember, this is a fragmented world and they have to break it up. And then we have a potential shutdown looming for the fourth quarter. And we all know this economy can't take it. And we know there's a reason the Fed and the central banks are keeping rates higher for longer so they can destroy the global economy along with the world reserve currency. And guys, every time we hear layoffs, we see the stock market move up. And unfortunately, people think everything is fine as long as their 401k is doing good. But we know eventually they're going to be out of work also because the robots, algorithms, and drones are coming to take over the economy. And the emerging markets, the BRICS nations led by China the Dragon, is going to rise with that digital yuan backed by that digital SDR, while the sheep in the West see America to Babylon fall. And remember the crypto teacher told you, because he knows, when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Well, look, we want to see the two sides come to a win-win agreement. President Biden has made clear he expects them to work hard to negotiate 24-7 uh, to get to a solution. And so um, we're hoping that that will happen soon. Because you have to be worried about inflation, I would think. Just as it's starting to come down, supply chain disruptions are a risk here, aren't they? Well, you know, I, I think it's premature to be making forecasts about what it means for the economy. Um, it would depend very much on how long the strike lasts and exactly who's affected by it. But um, the important point, I think, is that the two sides need to narrow their disagreements and uh, to work for a win-win, a contract that's good, good for the workers and for the industry as well. These, um, the industry has been doing well and president wants to see the workers uh, come out ahead as well. It's part of a, a string of strikes that, that we have seen. Hollywood, the writers, the rail workers, the Teamsters, upcoming strike potentially for healthcare workers on the West Coast. What do you think is driving all of this labor activism that we haven't seen the likes of in years? Well, we have a good, strong labor market, and the demand for workers has been high. And... Um, you know, it, it's important for workers to be able to realize uh, gains. The Treasury Department recently put out a, um, a kind of white paper about labor unions and the contribution they make to our economy. And um, we want to see good jobs that pay um, wages that um, 
enable people to live a good life, especially people without a college education. Um, so the president feels very strongly, he's very strongly in favor of collective bargaining and um, the ability to strike as part of that. Are you anticipating a shutdown? There's absolutely no reason for a shutdown. Um, the Senate Republicans, the Democrats in both the House and Senate um, stand ready to enact appropriations bills that are consistent with the bipartisan agreement that was reached to lift the debt ceiling. And we want to see Congress pass legislation that will um, create appropriations or a continuing resolution. There's absolutely no reason for a shutdown and we want Congress to do its work of funding the government <clears throat> and keeping it open. But the but time is time is running out, as you know. Is that a, a could that have a potential economic impact if we see a shutdown? Um, it could have some impact, um, but there is no reason for it to occur, and we want Congress to stay focused. We've got a good, strong economy, as we just discussed, and um, creating something that. Uh, a situation that could cause a loss of momentum is something we don't need as a risk at this point. It does, though, put the Fed in a bit of a quandary. It, it's got a dual mandate. W one, it needs to worry about inflation, but two, it needs to worry about unemployment. If that's the case, which of those mandates does it throw out the window? What's more important to the Fed right now? I think the messaging so far has been clear, that they have to restore price stability to the economy on a sustainable basis. And we have heard the messaging from the Federal Reserve that that is their focus right now, is returning to a 2% target on a sustainable basis. And I think in line with not ignoring the employment mandate for sure, but understanding that the cost of high inflation and bringing it down could result in uh, impacts to the labor market. Kamal Sri Kumar was on with us earlier this morning, and he has a pretty scary outlook. He thinks that we could be headed into a recession, he thinks, by the end of this year. So sometime in the next few months, he thinks we're going to be in a recession. He thinks inflation is still going to be pushing, especially if you're looking at headline, if you don't strip out energy and food. And that's going to put the Fed in a pretty tough position. Um, he, he's basing this not only by what you're seeing with the 10-year, two-year spread on things, but also what we've seen in manufacturing turning down, uh, consumer sentiment turning down. Does that sound like a plausible situation? So I think that should be among the scenarios that uh, markets and all of us should be thinking about. It would be very unusual to see a tightening cycle that has not resulted in a recession. What magnitude? I think clearly uh, you could come up with a variety of assumptions to try to determine that. But I think what we've seen so far is the economy responding to those higher rate increases. And then it's really a question of how durable, how resilient that economy is to uh, adjust to the rates in process, and whether the Federal Reserve will feel like it has to do more. So too soon. Uh, to call a recession, I think, just like it's too soon to call a soft landing. Going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go, but clearly we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy, and it'll be one that is more leverage to technology, and I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust. 
and we will save over seven trillion dollars a year. Six to eight percent of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American, you know. Uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it is it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, oh, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETF, are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Crypto teacher and the New World Order book, plus the three kids' books, it's time to re-educate. Also, New to Crypto's Coinbase, BitChute, Binance, do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks, the receiver, the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate. Not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figures. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends, so therefore we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1, King Yahshua and Drama Team. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.